Hello students, welcome to another lecture of uh, electronic devices and circuits. Today we will discuss about feedback amplifiers. A practical amplifier is a very high gain. That is the input, the output is n time of the input signal. So even is causal disturbance of the input will appear in the amplified form at the output. So there is a strong tendency in amplifiers to introduce hum due to sudden temperature changes or stray electric and magnetic fields. Therefore, a, a high gain amplifier tends to give noise along with signal in its output. The noise in the output of an amplifier is undesirable and must be kept as low as possible. The noise level in amplifiers can be reduced considerably by use of negative feedback. By injecting a fraction of the input of the output in phase opposition to the input signal. The object of this chapter to consider the effects and methods of providing negative feedback in transistor amplifiers. Feedback. So the process of injecting a fraction of the output energy of some device back to the input is known as feedback. The principle of feedback is probably as old as invention of first machine, but it is only around some 50 years ago that the feedback has come into use in connection with the electronic circuits. It has been found very useful in reducing noise in amplifiers and making amplifier operation stable. So the unlimited gain has to be kept under control. To keep it under control, we need to use negative feedback. Depending upon whether the feedback energy aids or opposes the input signal, there are two basic types of feedback in amplifier. That is positive feedback and negative feedback. If we want to increase the output, we use a positive feedback and if we want to control the output, we definitely are going to use negative feedback. So the positive feedback, when the feedback energy that is voltage or current is in phase with the input signal, it is called positive feedback. Both amplifier and feedback network introduces a phase shift of 180 degree. The total phase shift around the circuitry close path should be 350, 360 degree causing the feedback to be phased with the input signal. As you can see from here, this is the input signal V in and there is an amplifier. So this amplifier is amplifying the signal and this output is out of phase with the input and this output, a part of output is given to the feedback network and which again provide a feedback of 180 degree and again given to the input signal. So we have in phase with V in. This out feedback voltage should be in phase with the input voltage in positive feedback. So the positive feedback increases the gain of the amplifier. However, it has this advantage of increasing distortion and instability. Therefore, the positive feedback is seldom employed in amplifiers. One Important use of feedback is in oscillators. So positive feedback is mostly used in oscillators in which you want to generate a oscillating output voltage. So the if positive feedback is sufficiently large, it leads to oscillations. As a matter of fact, an oscillator is a device that converts DC power into AC power of any desired frequency with the help of the positive feedback network. Negative feedback when the feedback energy or voltage is out of phase with the input signal and thus opposes it, it is called negative feedback. The amplifier introduces the phase shift of 180 degree into the circuit while the feedback network is so designed that it introduces no phase shift that is zero phase shift. The result is that feedback VF is 180 degree out of phase with the input signal and hence you can see this is the negative feedback input voltage 180 degree phase shift and it is given to now this feedback provides zero phase shift so these input and the feedback are out of phase by 180 degree in case of negative negative feedback reduces the gain of the amplifier however the advantage of negative feedback are reduction in distortion stability in gain increased bandwidth and improved input and output impedances it is due to these advantages that negative feedback is frequently employed in amplifiers so what is the principle of negative feedback voltage amplifiers? A feedback amplifier is two parts, amplifier and a feedback circuit as we have just seen. The feedback circuit usually consists of resistors that returns a fraction of output energy back to the input. 
principle of negative feedback of an amplifier typical values that has been assumed to make the treatment more illustrative for example the output of the amplifier is 10 volt the fraction millivolt of this output is that is 100 millivolt is feedback to the input where it is amplified in series with the input signal 101 millivolt you can see from here here it is that is the gain is 10 upon 1 millivolt so this is the amplifier with gain av we are getting 10 volt and we are getting it into amplifier and we are this we are getting the 100 millivolt so this so the fraction of the output voltage is 100 millivolt upon 10 volt that is mv 0.01 and gain of the amplifier with negative feedback is 10 upon 101 mv that is feedback, approximately so when negative voltage feedback is applied the gain of the amplifier is reduced thus the gain of the above amplifier without feedback is 10,000 whereas with negative feedback is only 200 when negative for the uh, voltage feedback is employed, the voltage actually applied to the amplifier is extremely small. And in negative voltage feedback circuit, the feedback fraction millivolt is always between 0 and V, that is the M of V between 0 and 1. The gain and feedback is sometimes called closed loop gain, while the gain without feedback is called open loop gain. These terms come from the fact that the amplifier and the feedback circuits form a loop. When loop is opened by disconnecting the feedback circuitry from the input amplifier, gain is AV. The open loop gain, when the loop is closed, the feedback, the gain is decreases to AVF, that is the closed loop gain. So here it is shown the gain of a negative feedback. You can see this is the amplifier gain, this is the feedback gain, and it is just input gain minus whatever we have get from the feedback path and be into E0. So, negative feedback in, as shown in the figure. The gain of the amplifier without feedback is AV as shown. Negative feedback is then applied by feeding a fraction MV of the output voltage E0. That is the output voltage E0. Back to the amplifier input. Therefore, the actual input to the amplifier is the signal EG that is the input voltage minus the feedback voltage MV into EO. MV into EO. So, the amplifier input voltage is now the difference between the feedback and the input voltage that is EG minus MV into EO. So the gain EG minus MV minus MV into EO into AV is equal to E0. So we get that the gain e, E0 upon EG is equal to AV upon 1 plus AV into MV. So this is the open loop gain, this is the feedback gain. So it gives the term AV upon 1 plus. This term is also known sometimes called B, B, beta. Both EG upon E is the voltage gain of the amplifier with feedback. The voltage gain of the negative feedback is AV upon 1 plus product of the gain of the amplifier and the feedback gain. It may be seen that the gain of the amplifier without feedback is AV. However, when negative feedback is applied, the gain is reduced by a factor 1 plus AV gain AV into MV. So, the negative feedback does not affect the current gain of the circuit. So this was the basic introduction about the uh, feedback amplifier that is the positive and negative feedback amplifier. We will see the application of the positive feedback amplifier as oscillators in the next unit and the negative feedback amplifiers we are using to control the output voltage to control the output gain. Thanks for watching the video. We will continue with the same in the next lecture. Thank you very much.